What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Blue Blood Sports TV, back at y'all with another one. So, two division world champion, former unified junior welterweight world champion, WBC welterweight world champion, Puerto Rican superstar boxer, Danny Swift Garcia. 36 wins, three losses, no draws, 21 wins by way of knockout, 33 years of age, stands at five foot eight with a 68 and a half inch arm reach. With that said, Danny Garcia, the last time we saw him in the ring was December of 2020 when he took on and lost to now undefeated unified WBC IBF welterweight world champion superstar boxer Earl the True Spence Jr., who is widely considered to be top three best pound for pound fighters in the world. With 27 wins, no losses, no draws, 21 wins by way of knockout, Earl Spence Jr. is 31 years of age. He stands at five foot nine and a half with a 72 inch armage. That's the last time we saw Danny Garcia in the ring, uh, and that was Errol Spence coming off of a 14 month layoff uh, after suffering a horrific car accident after unifying the titles against two time welterweight world champion superstar boxer Showtime Sean Porter. So. Errol Spence, he dominates Danny Garcia in that fight, okay? Uh, he wins a unanimous decision victory coming off again, 14-month layoff, Southpaw, Errol Spence is. Uh, and this is a fight that Danny Garcia was calling for, okay? Uh, now Danny Garcia has resurfaced. Danny Garcia has, uh, you know, somewhat been out of the boxing limelight. We see Danny Garcia making business moves, buying property uh, with his family. But we haven't seen Danny Garcia talk the sport of boxing, okay? And with that said, now Danny Garcia is reportedly uh, going to return to the ring in February or March. And Danny Garcia uh, feels like he's going to make his debut, okay, at junior middleweight, 154, okay? He says that he struggled to make 147, uh, and he wants to be a three-division world champion, so he's looking to go up to 154. The problem is that there's only two champions at 154 okay uh you have you know um brian castano who is undefeated 17 wins no losses two draws 12 wins by way of knockout 32 years of age stands at five foot seven and a half with a 67 and a half inch arm reach okay brian castano is the wbo world boxing organization uh with president um daryl peoples he holds that belt i'm um, excuse me uh with um i forgot the president for wbo okay it's slipping my mind so uh with that said you know uh the wbo is what brian costano has now another guy holds all the other belts that being jamel lions only charlo 34 wins one loss one draw 18 wins by way of knockout he's 31 years of age 5 foot 11 with a 73 inch armage okay he had a, a draw in his last fight with Brian Castano in an undisputed showdown that many people thought that Brian Castano won that fight, okay? And uh, he didn't get the nod. We expected to get an immediate rematch after that fight, but it seems like they're going in different directions. Uh, Tim Zhu, the son of the legend Costa Zhu, uh, is going to become the mandatory for Brian Castano. He has a fight coming up. And then after that fight, he's uh, scheduled to face off against Brian Castano as his mandatory to get an opportunity to fight for a world title. Okay, and uh, we don't know what direction Jamel Charlo is going to go in. But Jamel Charlo is under the same stable as uh, uh, Errol Spence Jr. So Errol Spence Jr. is trainer, trainer of the year, one of the best trainers, well-renowned trainer, Derrick James, is jamel charlo's trainer there's a lot of similarities in jamel charlo's approach to the sport of boxing as far as his skill set and how he boxes to that of errol spence jr but he's bigger than errol spence jr two inches taller and has a almost a two inch arm reach advantage over errol spence and so now danny garcia he does an interview and in this interview danny garcia he's calling out jamel charlo he says I make my debut in February and March. Just to let you know, I'm going to be considered the best junior middleweight in the world. And I'm looking to collect that belt from Jamel Charlo. Okay. Uh, Jamel Charlo, he responds. He states that he's going to, he would gladly knock out Danny Garcia, you know, uh, 
And Danny Garcia says that the 154 pound division needs a big name. He's the biggest name in the division. I think that uh, Jamel Charlo is the biggest name in that division. I think that Jamel Charlo's name is bigger than Danny Garcia. Okay, um, now Danny Garcia has been on a big stage more so than Jamel Charlo, but I think that Jamel Charlo's uh, um, portfolio and Jamel Charlo's resume is better than Danny Garcia, arguably. You can make a case that Danny Garcia's resume is better. But obviously, uh, Jamel Charlo, Danny Garcia has lost all, you know, most of his big fights. Now, he's won some fights that he was supposed to lose. He, he beat a uh, mayor King Kong. Uh, most people pegged him to lose that fight against Amir King Kong. Uh, he beat Lucas the Machine Matisse. Many people picked him to lose that fight against Luce, uh, um, Lucas Matisse. Okay, so he has upset the apple card. Okay, but then when he fought Sean Porter for the vacant WBC title, he lost. When he fought Keith Thurman in a unification bout, he lost. When he fought Errol Spence to try and regain the titles, he lost. Okay, and so with that said, you know, uh, he's lost his big fights. And Danny Garcia is physically limited, okay? He doesn't have very fast feet, doesn't have very fast hands. Uh, what he does have is power in both hands. He has power in his left hand, power in his right hand, he sits down on his punches. Uh, he has a lot of power in his in his hooks, okay? Uh, especially the left hook, but both hooks, you know? Uh, and so he has a lot of power, okay? Uh, he's proven to have a sturdy chin. Uh, he's proven to you know, um, being, you know, uh, in these fights in competitive fights. Okay. Uh, the fight with Keith Thurman was, I thought Keith Thurman clearly won the fight, but it was somewhat competitive. Uh, the fight with Sean Porter, I thought Sean Porter clearly won the fight, but it was somewhat competitive. And I thought Errol Spence dominated Danny Garcia. Uh, I think that Jamel Charlo would be the first person to stop Danny Garcia. Uh, Jamel Charlo's style is all wrong for Danny Garcia. Again, his style is very similar to that of, you know, um, Errol Spence Jr. Now, Errol Spence is obviously a southpaw. Uh, Errol Spence is, a, uh, is more fluid uh, as far as his, you know, his mobility in the ring than Jamel Charlo. Uh, Jamel Charlo is more flat-footed than Errol Spence Jr. And he seems to be a little more lethargic and a little more uh, predictable, okay? But his boxing ability... And, uh, you know, uh, his ring IQ, along with his power, his size, would prove to be just extremely too much for Danny Garcia, in my opinion, who's not the biggest guy. Uh, so Danny Garcia at five foot eight with a 68 inch arm reach means that Jamel Charlo is going to have a um, at five, a six feet tall. He's about six feet tall. You know, he's going to have um, a four inch height advantage and he's going to have a. Uh, with Danny Garcia's 68 inch arm reach and Jamel Charles' 74 inch arm reach, he's going to have a six inch arm reach advantage over Danny Garcia. And he's the better athlete. And he's just naturally bigger, okay? So you factor in all of those things and Danny Garcia not being flea footed, that's not gonna bowl well. Uh, the Where Brian Costano had success against Jamel Charlo is that. Uh, because Brian Castano has those limitations as well, five foot seven and a half, uh, with a sixty-seven and a half inch arm reach. So he's an inch, a half inch shorter than Danny Garcia, and has a half inch arm reach uh, shorter than Danny Garcia. The difference is Brian Castano is very aggressive. Danny Garcia is a counter puncher. Okay, he's not very aggressive. He's a counter puncher. Okay, he relies on his opponent uh, offensive output to, for his offensive output. Okay, uh, you look at Brian Castano; he doesn't wait. He's the aggressor. He's first. Uh, he has faster feet than Danny Garcia. So, yes, he's a half inch shorter, has a half inch arm reach uh, disadvantage to Danny Garcia. But uh, he's far more aggressive. He's far more flea footed than Danny Garcia. And uh, he doesn't wait. He's always first. OK, so his style. Yes, you look at the size when it comes to his style. and You say, well, it's comparable to Danny Garcia. He's, Danny Garcia is bigger than Brian Castano. And he has success against Jamel Charlo. The completely different styles. Styles make fights, okay? Uh, Danny Garcia waits. He's always second. That's why he comes in second in most of his big fights, okay? So, Jamel Charlo's power against bigger guys that he's knocked out in his career, that's going to prove to be far too much for Danny Garcia. And Jamel Charlo's, uh, you know, um, style is the style 
and decides to be the first fighter to stop Danny Garcia, okay? Uh, even Brian Castano. If J Danny Garcia was to fight Brian Castano, he would lose to Brian Castano. Uh, I don't know if Brian Castano would stop Danny Garcia, but he does have power. Uh, he's very active. Uh, and he, he'll leave openings for Danny Garcia. Jamel Charlo was capitalizing on openings. But Jamel Charlo has faster hands than Danny Garcia. So Danny Garcia would be stopped, in my opinion, for the first time in his career by Jamel Charlo. Too big, too athletic, too strong, too much of a high ring IQ. Uh, he's too quick for Danny Garcia, who's a, a counter puncher. That don't bode well for Danny Garcia. But at least Danny Garcia is daring to be great. Unfortunately, to become a three-division champion, he's going to have to go through one of these guys, and I don't think he has the skill set, uh, the athletic ability to do so. But that's all I got for y'all. Make sure you hit the like button. Drop a comment in the comment section. Let me know what y'all think. Y'all already know what it is. It's your boy, Blue, Blue Blood Sports TV. Hate, like, comment, and subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Hit the bell icon to get all the new notifications. Follow me on Instagram at Blue Blood Sports TV, all one word. Y'all already know what it is. Shout out to the entire LDBC. Shout out to New Media. Shout out to Black Media Row. Make sure you like your shady videos. That's all I got for y'all. Peace. Alicia Bumgarner, you're watching Blue Blood Sports TV. Wow.